So good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful Sunday. I actually have the whole day to work in the shop. Carol's got a bunch of tedious stuff to do out in the greenhouse, so I filled up her dirt boxes this morning, made a dump run. It's 8.30 in the morning, and I've just drained the actual hydraulic lift here, and I drained the bottom pump one too, and uh, still got the plug out of that one, of course. And I'm gonna take this apart, and we're gonna try to see if we can't figure out where our oil is going. Now, every time I use this, I have to put a quart of oil in it. And, you know, it never leaks out anywhere. But it always goes down a quart of oil. So I always suspected it was going into the rear end, which who cares, right? You know. But, eventually, there's five gallons of, well, I actually took a little bit this morning and got rid of it. Um, and then there's another two and a half gallons there and I haven't drained the back of the rear end yet. So I probably had at least nine gallons, I'm gonna guess, in a machine that took, that holds four and a half. So pretty much accounts for all my oil I've been putting in. Um, so we're gonna pull this, I don't know if they call this one a power troll. You know, they got different names for them. But anyway, um, yeah, we're going to pull this one off. And then we're going to pull the pump off of the PTO. Because I suspect the seal on the other side of the pump is bad. And I don't think I've ever had that apart. So it'll be a fun adventure for all of us. So I'm not going to show it, but I'm going to take this off and just knock it loose with a hammer. And we'll set it on the ground. I'll show you what it got. There is a spring and a plunger in the back side of these. You've got to be careful of. I'll show it to you here when I get it loosened up. Now, when you take this off, you got to be careful. You don't bend this little valve and spring. Um, anyway, that's one of the critical pieces. Um, some of the other ones are a little different. Some of them actually have a valve that will come right out. Um, but that's on the John Deere A's. So they are, you know, they're not all the same. Like I say, some are power trolls and I don't remember what the other name is, but anyway, whatever it is, it is. So yeah, this came off pretty clean. Um, I don't know as I can lift that. I got to take all these chains off, I guess. Um, but yeah, we'll probably maybe change that seal if I got a new one. I think I do. Pretty sure. But anyway, yeah, it's been a while since I've changed one of those. But we got that off, and uh, now we got to take this guard off here. This power takeoff guard, which unfortunately is broke on one corner. Um, and we'll take off the pump and pull the pump apart. See what that looks like. And we'll kind of keep working at it here until we get to the magic spot where we can fix it. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to pull the back housing cover off and inspect the axle nuts or not. Um, you know, it's driving good. I don't know if the axles are slopping back and forth. I've never really jacked it up and hossed around on it. So, I don't know. I'll probably just keep putting a shot of grease in there too every time I use it and go that route. But anyway, we'll check this thing out here a little bit. Well, this PTO shaft just pulls out after you take off the guide. Um, I'll show you the pieces in a minute. And, of course, this is 5 eighths and 3 quarter inch to get this off. And we'll see if we can't get this tap loose here. I've never had this off, so... There she goes. She's loosening up. See what this old pump looks like inside after we get her off. 
Yeah. Jeez, it don't look bad. Looks extremely good. So. <clears throat> I'm gonna to have to do some study in here as to what we what we actually have here. Let me get you off the stand there and we'll look things over. Okay, so this right here is the culprit where my oil's going for sure. Get it out here in the sunlight. There we go. Um, you can see there's a leather seal in the center. I'm assuming this ring right here by my fingernail is a follower. I am assuming that that will move, that piece of steel, but I'm not positive either. Haven't dug it apart yet. We're going to dig it apart here in a little bit. Um, you can see where it seals on the back just by pressure. So this is kind of a funny, funny seal here. Um, not really sure it's one of John Deere's finest finest setups but there's also an oil port in there around that spring where oil I assume here yeah, comes in on the back side of that right there so that's part of the the flow I would assume it shouldn't be though because Oh, I bet that's just to keep this uh, low pressure when it's running. But that's not when it leaks. It leaks when it's shut off. Uh, as far as the gears, the gears. I don't know if I can pick one up or not. They got suction on the back. Come on. No. That's going to be something got to be washed. And, but they look pretty good. I mean, you know, that little stain and nothing there. That's just where it sat. At some point, that was down on the bottom for a lot of years, probably before I owned it, and you can see where it had moisture. And it's polished right off. Yeah, so pretty happy with what I've found other than the seal. So I'm going to do some washing, and I'll bring you back in a little while. Now this seal that we was looking at earlier, it's actually four pieces. Sun's gone down. Um, the ring, which is now loose, you can take it right out. And there's two fiber seals in there. It's uh, almost like a phenolic type stuff, but it's softer. I'm not sure what it's made out of. You know, it's not cork, it's something, something else. But anyway, some type of seal material. So as near as I can tell, this, <clears throat> this here is actually a wear surface, I believe, because there's bronze in there, I can see. has a bronze shoe. So I think this spins all the time on the shaft, and I don't think that this actually spins on this seal, but I'm not positive of that. You know, this, um, that spring, the way it's designed, um, I believe sets up against the gear. I got to go look at that. I'm pretty sure it sets right on the gear And if it does the spring would be turning with the gear So the spring would turn with this so I think this all turns it's a turning assembly and uh, I tr After I loosened all these fibers up I tried to put it back on the shaft and I would have had to have driven it on So I'm gonna say this is still good. It just needed to be cleaned and freed up so that that follower could push on it so anyway, the follower was stuck. And also, right in this hole here, piece of leather. So I'm assuming that the leathers are gone on that piston, or at least partially. <clears throat> now that can't cause a leak into the rear end because it's all sealed into this. The only place it goes into the rear end is that seal, which I'm assuming that's where it was leaking. Now I just did, I took all this garbage off the lifting mechanism. And this side here, for those of you who don't know, has a spring in it, a torsion spring. So you can see the end of it right here. And that fits in a hole on there. So you have to put that in, take a big wrench. Ew, sneezes are getting me. <clears throat> and uh, 
and then you walk it back. And it's quite a job to get the bolts in. But that's how it's done anyway. And now that I've got that torsion off of it, now you can actually bring this out. You can drive this pin out. You can pull the piston out. And you can't do it unless you take that cap off. So once you take this pin out, if you so choose, you can take this square unit off, take these two bolts out, and both these shafts will come out so you can clean stuff and whatever. Um, haven't decided if I'm going to get into it that far, but I am going to take this cotter pin out and tap that pin out, and we're going to have a look-see on that piston in there. There's two type of seals can be on this, and I have both of them, but one of them has an extra piece, and I don't have that extra piece, so I've got a partial type of seal for one style. Um, I'll show you the two different styles. I got all kinds of parts here that I've, you know, stocked up over the years. So this is one style, which is like a plastic, you know, and this is the other style, which is leather. I got a pair of those, so I'm, I'm all set on the leather ones. Um, I also, in my mess of stuff, got the right gasket. Okay, let's see here if we can get this piston out. So, it's not too bad of a deal, shouldn't be. Come on. right out with your finger that's what keeps it from rotating so it's kind of captive in there you know just one one side we'll set that over here so I'll never find it later oh yeah there ain't much left of that yeah so we will Disassemble here and put that new seal on it. We know what type it takes. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any more debris in there. I don't see any. Um, that doesn't account for all of it. You know, it only accounts for about half of it. But probably, if the truth was known, there was a big booger that fell out down there. It probably ground up most of it in the pump. So... Anyway, the old girl needed to come apart. I'll uh, meet you in on the vise. Well, I did it off camera. I took a screwdriver and I straightened out the fold over locks, which this one's been used at least twice because it stove all the hell. Um, I'm not going to do it on camera, but I will make a new one here in a few minutes. We'll. Uh, We'll get these two bolts out and not hard to make. And then we'll get this here to come loose. It's got suction on it right now. Huh, I should pick it up. Go over here where it doesn't have any It's kind of odd. Can't believe that stuck that hard. Guess it is though. Boy, that's stuck right to that leather. Amazing. So, yeah, that's all there is. Just a flat top piston. And uh, get a clean paper towel here. Little bit of leather stuck right there. Um, I'll go get a gasket scraper and we'll remove that piece of leather. And then I'm going to make a, a new one of these. I'll be back in a minute. 
Well, I've got manual cutter in here. Um, it's really the way to go on thin stuff like this because it don't tear your up so bad. You notice I've got a pair of gloves on. And we'll see here what we can get done here. Get it in the middle. You got light tin work to do of you know drilling light tin stuff buy yourself a set of those it'd be well worth your money just that simple and I'm going to put this back. I know I usually just pile my shit up, but some things I do take care of. Yeah, I don't remember who I bought these through. They are American made. Um, whole set of them here. I don't know if it says who actually made them or not. Uh, probably it doesn't say. No, doesn't say. Not in there anyway. Yeah. No, well, they, they're not too damn proud of it. I'll tell you, it works awful good. And it does say Made in USA on it, but, you know, no name anywhere. So, I don't know if this was sold by Mac Tools at one time. I'm not sure. But anyway, they work awful good. Okay, I've been looking, um... I've got the new cup on there, leather cup. And I thought, you know, in all the manuals and all the stuff, they might give a spec for the torque on these little bolts. They're not very big. They're 5 16 and they're non-hardened. So, you know, probably not much more than 10 or 15 foot-pounds. I'm going to say that's good enough. And then... Without staving up the uh, new piston. Top. We'll tap these up. Um, this is kind of one of those things that. Kind of got to fold not normal on this one because um, you don't want anything here to uh, hit the cylinder. So I'm going to grab an old punch so I can control it better than swinging a hammer. There. I know that's not normal practice to do stuff like that, but we'll just walk these right up. And that's not going to hit nothing. If you want to see the person that really is good, and he'd cringe if I bent more than one, one flat, but you have to on these to get it away from the actual cylinder. But uh, there's a channel, Squatch 253. Um, any of you guys like internationals, cats, like anything mechanical? The guy is a Ford mechanic by trade, but when he goes home at night, he plays with bigger equipment. And, well, check him out. Good channel. Okay. Let's see if we can wiggle this in. Because this is going to probably go in like a pain.
Um, yeah, can't really see it. Come on. Yeah, that's going to go good, I can tell. Kind of got a feel there's a little bevel on the back of that cylinder right there. Now we'll see when we go in how much leather we took off. Yeah, let's see. No, I don't see any leather. Good. That's what you want to see. Yeah, if you see a ring of leather around, you know, of course you probably wouldn't be able to push it. But, um, yeah, let's see here if I can. Probably gonna have to twist that and pull it back a little bit. I don't wanna pull it back too much so it'll be back out. Ah, come on. We will get this thing done, guys. I promise. Turn it just a little bit. Don't know if that's enough or not, but. There we go. Get that flat up where it belongs. Beautiful. I'm gonna go get me a real good quality caught a pin and I'll be back. I guess this time when I bend it, I'm going to push against it. So I can be darn sure that it doesn't go out. Oh yeah, that's all it was bent before, so. Yeah, that misses everything. That's as far as it goes right there. Yeah, a little tiny, tiny piece of leather. I don't know if that's a perfect science how to get that in there good, but uh, anyway, it's a lot better than the one that was in there. I'm pretty sure you get hydraulic pressure behind it and it'll seal. So now we got to get this torsion spring there back on which can be a son of a gun okay so I got this on there and uh, basically you got to pull it back and then the one bolt that you can get to which is going to be on the back I got to reset my pliers I guess Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll go with this route. Maybe we'll go get this bottom one here started. Here we go. Yeah, come on. Okay, we got one started. And then the other ones, we'll probably have to hold the load on it a little bit. Because they probably won't screw right in, although that one's gonna, I guess. 
see if the next one goes there again. If it doesn't, we'll just twist it a little bit with the... No, that one ain't gonna start, so we'll bring her up a little bit here. There we go. Yeah, beautiful. Went right in with my fingers all the way to the lock nut. So I'll tighten those up and the rock shaft part of it will be done as far as that seal replacement. And I do have the right gasket for this, but I'm going to put that on last. You have to do the pump first and we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, I got this pump house in a pot. It really looks good. There's not much for scratches on it. Not enough to concern me anyway. This piece right here has no gaskets. It's metal to metal. And I was looking down here on this end, you can see it's pretty dark. I believe that's been leaking. And if you look real careful, right there you can see where somebody's hit it. You can see where somebody's hit it right here. Now when I took it apart, I used a screwdriver and I held it in my hands and I drove it apart this way. Um, so I know it wasn't me that did that But somebody of course all this stuff's been into before so anyway, I am gonna sand this very carefully And I'm gonna file these off whatever there is for little boogers and I'm gonna use this anaerobic gasket maker um, normally I use this on uh, snowmobile engines you know things that I just metal to metal that are pretty close fit, but you want them to not leak at all. That stuff's good stuff. It's got to be clean. So I'll get this uh, sanded up, and then I'll go wash it. I'll do the centerpiece and get everything all ready to go. And then when we reassemble, we'll put that anaerobic gasket maker on it. So I'll bring you back in a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so getting ready to put this thing together. I got the first gear on because you can put that one on first. Um, but this is kind of a stacked assembly. It goes like so. Oh, what happened to the key right there? This shiny step right here is where the spring goes, so that goes on the inside. Come on, there we go. Yeah, that'll slide right back. And then we will put the spring on. Let's see, I'm going to have to get me a little bit of ultra slick on this shaft, yeah. Just to make sure we don't stave up the seal. Because like I say, that seal, once we freed it up from the rust, it seems to be working. I'm going to lubricate all that. It'll get oil as soon as you fill it full of oil anyway, but... Uh, now we'll see if we can get this. Yeah, both pieces in the metal washer. Actually, what I'm going to do is put the washer on first. Beautiful. So now, I'm 
this goes. It'll only go one way, by the way. It uh, drops on those pins. So I am going to put just a little bit of this seal at it. It's not really supposed to have, but I'm going to see if I can't squeeze some out of this. This is pretty old stuff. I don't know how it's going to act. Maybe gone by. No? Yeah, that's enough for that side. I'll just kind of smear it around. When this is all compressed, it shouldn't take up more than maybe a thousandth and a half, thousandths. It all depends how quick you get it tightened up after you put it on. Because where it's anaerobic, if you get it in the absence of air too long, it'll uh, start setting up before you get it squeezed out, which is not good. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and turn that over like so. I know you guys are on the wrong side, but put a little more on this side if I can do it I think the only things holding the PTO shaft from falling out is the uh, seal so yeah I think that's it looks good to me put the cap on that I say all you want to do just a, just enough say it's there Oop. yeah so the key fell out that's normal yeah, let's we'll get that back in yes sir See if we can. Yeah, come on. Of course, now we can't get the damn key to go in. There we go. Okay. Yeah, mother's gonna be happy with me tonight. One thing we do have to do, we got to get some some of this here on the back side of that seal cage. So let's get something so it won't start up dry if it starts spinning on that shaft. Okay, the seal is in. That gear is there. Let's see what kind of a scrape we can get into now. Guess we'll put a few nuts on first and that'll pull it up so that when you shove the bolts off, there's any debris, it won't fall down between the housing. That's the most important thing.
Right. Oh, well, let's see what we got. There's a three quarter wrench right there. We'll put her up the hand to make sure we're nothing gonna bind and break. Okay, I'm gonna grab a socket, tighten these up off camera. Well, if that goes in. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, I'll bring you back in a little bit. Okay, we're gonna put this power lift back on. And this is just a power lift. I looked it up in the book. The other style, the Power Troll, I have some of those on the other John Deere's. And I uh, guess my finger won't go in below there on the bottom. There we go. That spring, you got to make sure it stays on there while you're putting this together. And. Get the old girl started. I'll uh, get a socket here and we'll tighten them up. Make sure there's nothing on the threads. That bolt right there is no good. I'm going to use it, but it's no good. I don't know if you can see how that's been pulled. That's been way overstressed. So, this one here looks good. What I'm going to do, I'll get a couple of them in. And, uh, Just get them snug to keep the crap from getting in between. Boy, that one has been stretched too. Some of these things have been tight and some friggin' tight. Wow. Hmm. Boy, I'll be back. I want to show you those. I might get some different bolts. Yeah, I wanted to show you these up close. I don't know if the camera will focus or not, but you can see the threads, they nest right in close together. If you put it out here, they won't nest because, well, they're just so frigged up. So anyway, yeah, these are both stretched like a son of a gun right in there. So what I did, I had two of them in stock. And I put the other one up here. And when they're up top, top like this, you don't have to have them wicked tight. Not like you do on the bottom. So I'll just kind of baby that one a little bit when I tighten it. And, uh, call it good, probably.
one here is the bad one. We'll go kind of cautious on that. Half inch bolt, you shouldn't have to worry about with a shot. Ratchet like this, but like I say, I'll baby that top one. Well, now we can tighten that bottom up. And uh, I'll get that off camera. Then I'll put the plugs in and we'll see if she holds oil. So I wanted to show everybody this real quick here. Yeah, hopefully you can see it. Um, it says right here, SAE 30, and it holds five quarts. It says so right here for a power lift and power troll. So anyway, I'm going to go get five quarts of oil, and we'll fill her up, and we'll see what she does. So I just got done pouring in the five quarts. Um, as you can see, I made a mess. I had one about half in that slept and well, anyway, this right here is your fill plug. This is where it's supposed to be running out if it's full. Oop, she is. I'm sure it's over full as far as the test right here because we haven't ran it yet and filled up the cylinder. So. <clears throat> So anyway, yeah, that is the test height. If you've been running it normal and you want to just top it off, take that plug out, fill it till the oil comes out. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're about done with this power lift. Um, the power troll, I didn't explain it earlier. The power troll has all your remotes that come out of them. And, uh, matter of fact, I'll, I'll show you one here. So this here is on another one of my tractors. This is a power lift, and uh, it actually has a power troll sticker on it, but it shouldn't. But it's also got a Baker multi-valve on it, which is over here, so you can run other equipment. I'm not really sure about this. This is seized up. I've never messed with it, but it does work. Um, I've used this tractor here a lot. We have three point on it. And this one here on the old hand start A, this is the one I use a lot in the summer. This is actually the power troll. It's got, you know, a place to plug in your lines for your remote. And of course, if you have those off, then you just use it normal. So this one works good. Use it all the time for plowing and different things. Yeah, so this right here is another power troll. This one is, uh, hand operated or foot operated either one um anyway yeah they both work this one here i had cultivators on it and uh it needs some work um i don't know if it's stuck now or not it's been setting a long time carburetor's missing off now um, but anyway that's one of those projects hello everybody how's the uh, Got the rear end full of 90 weight. Um, just letting the funnel drain out. And yeah, I made a little bit of a mess down there, but not bad. Um, forgot to put that forward drain plug in, but I, I only lost about a, maybe even half a pint. It weren't much. I thought of it just as it was starting to drip. So anyway, yeah, we're doing pretty good here. Um, I thought I was gonna get it running tonight, but me and Carol had to go to the transfer station again tonight. I Hey everybody, I was trying to do the last of the video down there and the battery crapped out, but anyway, um, I don't know where it's going to end up or how it ended, but I put a new battery in here. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Keep safe. Don't hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.